Hello, this uh, demonstration of the new changes I've made to fluid particles. So let's start with some basic preparation and I'll create a collision object from the default cube. I'll just create a basic container shape, something like that, and make it a collision object. And as fluid don't really bounce from uh, objects, so let's set the damping to the full one value. Next I'll add a plane that will act as the particle emitter and I'll rotate it so that the normal is pointing downwards as that's where I want the particles to go. Oh yeah, and to show the particles fully I might want to set the collision object to only draw in wire mode. So let's add some particles and the first thing I want to do is set the lifetime to the whole timeline range so that the particles or the fluid won't disappear at any time in during the simulation. I'll also set the cache step to 1 as the particles will be colliding quite a bit. Mm. Now in the new fluid particles, the particle size plays quite a big role, so I want to show the particle size. Um, also I want to use the size deflect so that the particles collide correctly and use the multiply mass with size so that the forces acti acting on the particle stay a bit more consistent when we change the particle size. Okay, now we can activate the fluid physics and let's see what we have. Not much really. But that's because the particles are so small that there's no real consistency to the fluid. So let's increase the particle size to, for example, something like that. And let's see what we have. And straight away, we have some pretty nice fluid simulations without having to worry about any rest densities or interaction radiuses or anything. Just simply by visually seeing that the fluid is quite consistent and adjusting the particle size. Uh, now we have a problem that the particles are quickly becoming quite messy looking as they have all their sizes showing. So let's add an icosphere and move it to another layer and simply set the particles to be visualized with the icosphere. Now we can see the fluids much better. Now we can start looking at the basic fluid parameters. The first one is the stiffness which controls how much the fluid can compress and normally fluids don't compress very much, so let's increase the stiffness a bit. Now immediately we can see that the forces are quite strong and the fluids are exploding all over the place. To fix this we can adjust the subframes, let's say two for now, let's see if that's enough. Yeah, now the fluids are much stable, like much more stable again. Now in order to uh, create some more water-like fluids we might also want to decrease the viscosity a bit. So let's try that. And now it looks like the fluids are on the verge of exploding again, so let's increase the subframes once more. Perhaps even a bit more. Yep, yeah, now the fluids look a bit more stable again. Now, I'm not quite sure uh, of where you could actually use the buoyancy parameter, but it certainly makes for interesting simulation possibilities. So let's look at that next. And we can watch the, this one more time. Yep, it's pretty 
pretty nice. Uh, let's set the stiffness and viscosity to the default parameters and add some buoyancy instead. Okay, that's a bit too much. Now we can see that the areas where there's less fluid, they start to float upwards and where there's more, they start coming down. So I don't really know what you can do with this, but it's a nice possibility to have. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is how to get some smooth flows. Because now the flow from the emitter is quite random, as you can see, and the reason is if I show the unborn particles, all the particles are born at random locations, so there's really no way to get a smooth flow. In order to get around this, we can use the particles per phase option, so that the particles are only emitted from a certain number of predefined places on the emitter. And I'd say something around 30 or 31 would be quite good for this emitter size. And let's see what we have. Okay, the flow is a bit smoother already. We might want to increase the amount of the particles a bit. And we probably don't need this many subframes for now. Yep, that's already pretty smooth. But we can go even further. Um, now, if there are 31 particles possibly emitted from the phase, and the particles are emitted for 200 frames, then to make the emission as consistent as possible, we want to have all the 31 particles emitted every frame. So let's set the particle amount to 200 times 31. And let's see what happens. Now, immediately we see that there are way too many particles clumping on the straight on the emitter, but this can be easily fixed by just introducing some more normal velocity. So the particles that are born get some velocity that they have time to get out, out of the way before new particles are born. Let's see, for example, 5. Uh, it's still a bit too little. Let's say 10. So there we have some pretty smooth flow. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a nice time playing with the new fluid particles.